Hi, Latinos and Clinical Research members. Thank you so much for tuning into this interview. Uh, it's both me and Judy today interviewing a special guest that I'm extremely excited about. I really couldn't wait till we got to interview her, and you'll see why shortly. So uh, we have Yvonne Rodriguez here with us. Now, if you look up, look for her. Uh, we're going to obviously provide her link for LinkedIn, should you like to connect. Um, but her panhandle name is Ana Yvonne Rodriguez, but she goes by Yvonne, so just so you know. But awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Ivana. Really appreciate it. I'm very excited. Uh, I really couldn't wait till we did this interview. And really just to kind of kickstart, uh, I know we're not necessarily in Hispanic Heritage Month as of yet officially, but I really wanted to kickstart off with you giving your background and how much you are pushing towards the mission. Um, you coincide so much with LICR's mission vision. So um, yeah, I'm just thank you for being here today. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. For sure. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. So um, obviously there's so much to kind of cover. So um, I guess we'll just start off by letting you do an intro of yourself. Feel free, to free, uh, feel free to reach out. I mean, to speak on what, everything that you'd like to share and then we can go from there. Sure. So again, uh, my name is Yvonne Rodriguez. Uh, I am originally from Socorro, Texas. Uh, that is a very rural community outside El Paso, Texas. Um, I've been in clinical research for a little bit over 20 years, and I've um, been through the, you know, all of the gamuts of, you know, and the dynamics that, you know, feed into uh, clinical research. I've been a CRC. I've been able to draw blood and be in the lab. Um, I've worked on data entry, IRBs you know, CROs and sponsors. So um, most recently, I uh, decided to step out of the sponsor role and start my own company. Um, that is Egality Sciences. And my goal is to be able to get more clinical trials into our communities so that we have a better chance of representation in medicine development, but also try to create um, opportunities that maybe people don't have as a um, new way of treatment. Awesome. Very, yeah, that's, very that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's really great. How much be, prior to coming out of the CRO uh, sponsor area, um, how much experience did you have in that? So I left, I, um, I left AstraZeneca after eight and a half years of being in at AstraZeneca. So I had been a global lead. Um, then I went through the country level uh, leadership. And then um, most recently I had an associate director role. I was in charge of a portfolio. Oh in my oncology. gosh. I didn't know that part. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> wow <laughs> that we got amazing. lucky to come across you. This is amazing. <laughs> I mean, uh, I work in a CRO and um, I know, you know, all those roles that you just mentioned, how intense and time crunching everything is for those roles. So it's pretty amazing that you did that. And I'm, you know, so happy to hear that you, I mean, obviously, of course, AstraZeneca is great, but that you went out on your own and you took your skill set to make something for yourself. That's, that's amazing. And we need more, you know, Latino, Latina leaders out there. And so, so happy to make this connection. It's awesome. Um, yeah, I have a quick question because yeah. I know you've been in clinical research for a while. How did you get started? into the field. <laughs> sure. So, you know, like many of us, I feel in the industry, I think most of us have a passion for medicine or helping people in the medical setting. Um, for me, it was, um, you know, first generation, you know, you don't get, you know, what you have for jobs. Um, you can't go to labs, you know, it's just, that's not in the, in the books for you. So for me, um, I had to pivot. And instead of doing bio, I did um, business administration, um, but still focused on a quarter life crisis to say, I want to do something that I love to do that I want to do for, you know, that, that I enjoy. And in doing so, you know, I just went through, you know, I still want to go into the medical field, but I don't know what it is. And I actually, one of uh, a site in San Antonio, Texas um, said, do you know how to audit? And I, you know, I was very confused. I was like, you know, like financial audits, I don't know what you mean. And they said, well, it's more of like auditing 
charts. And so that's kind of where it got started. I'm like, okay, let's talk about diabetes and let's talk about glucose. And so I I ended up, you know, taking the extra bio classes after I graduated, but, you know, it was to help QC the charts before the CRAs came. So that's how I got started in that role. And it just took off because I'm like, there's so many other roles that are as interesting and that all contribute. 100%. And yeah, that's a very so important role. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, when I started, I think it was 19 or 20, um, I was at Home Health and I actually uh, started in quality assurance um, yeah. nurses charts. So I didn't know that that's what I was doing, technically pre-audit or whatever, but yeah, pretty interesting. So that's why I try to tell people all the time, it doesn't matter your background, you know, the skill sets can transfer over, right? So but that's exactly. awesome. That's really great to hear. Um, so I did want to touch on a little bit, because I do see looking at your profile, right? You do have the member uh, board of directors, right, with the National Hispanic Health Foundation. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So um, it, this was, you know, very recent development as of uh, May, June timeframe. Um, and what my goal is, is to help um, Dr. Elena Rios, the CEO and founder of both the National um, Medical Hispanic Association and the National Hispanic Health Foundation to establish a um, a research um, centric you know, to try to push more research to our communities. And, you know, as we we as Latinos and many underserved communities value our physicians and, you know, the relationships we have with them, their trust, you know, we want, you know, to be able to have, you know, these trusted leaders that are interested in research to be able to, you know, reach out to the community and, uh, provide that education that's needed. Hundred percent. That's great. That's really amazing. Um, can you? I mean, how did that come about? Was it just through your passion and networking, and then that just kind of like fell I? Into place? So I, I was a actual. I was a leader. I was a life cycle uh, leader within the Hispanic Business Resource Group at AstraZeneca, and so um, many of the roles are you know, marketing, you know, we have a group of Latinos that are working on various different departments. Um, But I was the only one that was dedicated to research. And in doing so, I've I've looked uh, for opportunities to work with um, organizations like Dr. Rios. And it just so happened that, you know, they were having a symposium specifically to talk about clinical trials. And I you know, raised my hand. I'm like, can I please attend? And, uh, you know, I I was, you know, it was granted to me. So I was able to, you know, further have a a working relationship with that organization. And then when I decided to branch out on my own, I took a chance and just said, you know, I'm taking off my sponsor hat, but I really, this, this really calls to me. And, you know, this is what I can help with. This is what I can bring to the table. And, you know, please consider me. And so um, after a review of all, you know, I, they have a process and an application. And so I was admitted. So I'm very thankful Amazing. for the opportunity. That's such an awesome story. I mean, really, and it's crazy mm-hmm. how just offering yourself, your knowledge, you know, you know, just out there, what that can actually do and how that can resonate over time, and connections, business, networking, everything, you know? And so it's just try to, we try to tell our members all the time, you know, it's about networking and getting yourself out there. Cause once you do that, I mean, anything is possible. Right. And so, and I think that's, I think that's what we need, right. We need a lot more Latinos getting out there, um, you know, taking a chance on themselves and what they can bring yes. to the table and ultimately creating that network for themselves. And I mean, you're the perfect prime example, right? And so that's, it's a really great story to hear. Uh, I don't know, Sister Judy, um, probably talking over you. Do you have any questions? No, I mean, I, I think uh, you need to reach out for opportunities like that. You never know um, what the answer is going to be. And sometimes you'll be surprised that you'll hear a yes instead of a no. Um, but until you reach out and you ask, then you won't know if you have the opportunity. So it's great that you did that. And that like, as Ashley mentioned, a perfect example. Um, and that's that's amazing, amazing opportunity. 
Thank you. So, Ivan, if you don't mind asking, how did you come across Latinos in clinical research? Through LinkedIn. So <laughs> I'm I'm heavily involved, and I was really excited to find your group. Um, and I'm, you know, just I'm I'm a I'm a follower. So you know, thank you for the the information that you put out to our community. And you know, I'm I'm excited to be able to you know help you know in any way for any of the members here that are listening. Um, you know, I think if again, like you mentioned, I think networking is very key in our industry. And I think that, you know, we we must help each other out. 100%. Can agree more? <laughs> so given your where you're at right now, I mean you're doing a whole lot. Um, what are you what are your goals within the next three to five years? I mean, what are you trying to achieve um personally and then I guess within the community? Um just curious. So uh that's uh I have, I do have many goals. Uh, first and foremost, um, I think what I really want to achieve is just to be able to network and to work with communities and to be able to reach out to them and have establish the trust that um, people don't, you know, it's it's not something that comes easy. And I understand, especially in research, just to due to historic, you know, atrocities. But I also want to um, listen and to see, you know, to build that trust. But you know, listen and see what their concerns are, and also try to bridge that with, you know, information um, and maybe just being able to take because of my network, maybe take it back and say, you know, you guys have it all wrong. This is what the problem is. And this is what you need to address. It's not about the availability of trials. It's about, you know, you know, how much time it takes or, you know, wanting childcare um, or, or needing childcare during a trial or during a visit. So things of that nature. So to me, um, just the ability, the goal for me is to be able to reach out to community physicians, you know, throughout the nation. I, I, you know, I know a lot of Latinos are Southwest, Southeast, major cities, but um, because I come from a rural community, I really do want to reach out to rural communities. So that's my goal. Um, you're you're speaking my language. I, so our <laughs> our office isn't located in a, a rural small community in California, and so a lot of the things you mention are things that I constantly have conversations with sponsors, CROs, vendors about the things we need in our community, which could be different because we have a large Latino um, patient population, about eighty five percent, compared to other cities. And sometimes right. I feel like they don't understand <laughs> why we need all these extra things or why we're asking for additional resources. Um, so it's great that you're able to, you know, have these conversations. Do you feel that they're listening? Do you feel, do you see change um, in the studies and the people you're speaking to? Um, so while I was a lead, I drove that change. Um, while I was in charge of the Hispanic, you know, the life cycle management group, I drove that change and, and it was successful. Um, so we I actually co-founded a uh, learning academy. Well, I worked with a colleague and I helped implement a uh, Park Cell Learning Academy within AstraZeneca. And um, we were able to, you know, once it took off, you know, recruit um, underserved uh, physicians in underserved communities that were naive to clinical research but needed training. And, you know, there was a cohort of about 50 and it was not just the PI, but it was also the CRC. So, you know, again, understanding that the CRC is, you know, the heart sure. of, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> of exactly. you know, to make things happen. Right. So, um, so, you know, anyway, so moving back to, I think just because I was able to move some of these items, I gain the courage to step out of this box and see how much more we could achieve. So, you know, just 
being able to reach out and network with organizations and push further for our communities, I think, you know, is the biggest goal. That's great. And what's the feedback you're getting um, in these communities? Well, for example, that cohort of the 50, like what are they, <clears throat> they were able to establish research sites, they work on state, like what's the state, well, I guess, whatever you so, can find. <laughs> so the next step is, I think, and a crucial step that I can, you know, I can help with, I know many others can as well, but it's the operate, like they don't, they may not have the time to mm -hmm. properly operationalize the yeah. study. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know how many resources you need, what, you know, maybe your site doesn't have SOPs on what to do, you know, and, or, or time, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they can delegate items, but they don't know how to delegate. So, um, so to me, that's the next step is right. to have somebody to help with all of those questions. Yeah. Yeah. And that's definitely a challenge because you're taking these physicians that are used to doing things in the clinic a certain way. And then research is a little bit more, um, detailed, I guess, a lot more things go into it. And sometimes they want to transition those skills, um, but they don't understand it. But yeah, definitely the team helps um, and ensuring you have someone that can guide them um, on what they need to do to get them prepared, right? I think that's a, that's definitely a challenge. Yeah. In addition to, I mean, I another one that I've heard is the the financial, like the, the not mm -hmm. being able to, it, it comes up with operations, right? But it's a big piece because if your contract and budget aren't done correctly, then you're hemorrhaging, you know, resources and money because it's, it wasn't done properly. So, yeah. or, you know, there's no, no knowledge behind that. So that's also crucial. Yeah, that's definitely, it's very important for them to work with someone who's knowledgeable on that aspect to guide them on that. Um, definitely recommend that to all the new sites and yes. investigators. Well, it's really amazing to hear everything you're doing, uh, what you've been a part of. And I think that that's in a testament to to what you're going to be bringing to the future. And, you know, LICR is so happy to you know come across you. And as I mentioned earlier before the recording, we're really hoping that we can collaborate more together and kind of, you know, bring our efforts together to see how much more change we can bring. Right. Um, but I did want to say for any of, cause we do get asked a lot of questions and on, you know, how do I get more involved as a Latino or what organizations are out there? And it's, it's unfortunate. Cause I mean, me personally, as somebody that actually looks, um, I know that I'm missing a lot of organizations out there that are Latinos that I'm not coming across of. Um, so aside from the national Hispanic, uh, health foundation, are there any other ones that you're involved in? Um, organizations? Yes. Um, so currently, um, since I just started, no. Okay. But I'm start. I'm trying, uh, I've been busy trying to make sure that, you know, the organization I establish is, you know, when people join my organization, that they're all, that they're made whole, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, if they're going to come and work for Egality and work on making sure that sites are established and have everything that, you know, you know, if we come, we all come from industry, but we all like, you know, have our personal needs as well. So I want to make sure that we have SOPs and that we have, you know, um, you know, just insurance and basic, basic needs. So I'm working on building that structure up now. And I'm hoping to establish that very shortly. Awesome. Really great. Well, yeah, great. Uh, thank you so much. I know we're going to about hitting the, the time already, but thank you so much, Yvonne. I really appreciate it. You guys, we're going to have her LinkedIn link at the bottom of um, the signing. So if you want to reach out to her, you want to network, please do so. Um, again, your network is everything. And it's people like Yvonne that are actually making change in the world right now that should be part of your network. So Thank you again, Yvonne. Thank you so, so much for everything. I look forward to speaking with you uh, again and, you know, seeing how we can collaborate in the future. Yeah, Thanks thank you, so Yvonne. Much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, nice Judy. meeting you. Thank, thank you, you for taking your time today.